coming up next on Button to Christ Ministries. When they came, they came in with a temper and said, what happened to you? Don't you know that we're searching for you? And he said, why you worry about me? I'm doing my father's business. Come on, somebody. You see, that's a spiritual thing, you see. Because it could have been embarrassing. They going into the temple and, and the young man said that, like, you're not even my father. <laughs> Hello, somebody. You see, it's beyond the flesh. It's spiritual. He was looking and saying, listen, don't you know that we are to put God first? Don't you know that we should have a relationship with God first? Hello, somebody. Stay tuned. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. God is truly an awesome and powerful God. And I just want to welcome you tonight as you fellowship with us. Seems like when the weather is getting nicer, you know, we expect to see a lot of people out here tonight. But praise God, we just want to fellowship with him for this moment. I just want to welcome all those who are listening on the prayer line. You're calling from different countries. We just appreciate your support. God is good. God is awesome. He's powerful. Also, we want to welcome all those who are watching live on Facebook, all those who are watching from different countries. You know, if you're watching from Australia, from UK, we just want to welcome you as we fellowship together in one accord. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to go into a short word tonight. Last time we were here, we spoke about the character of Christ. How do we, we emulate, imitate Christ and God's character? And, and it was powerful. It would go all the way back to the Word, the Word. Tonight, God wants me to talk about the relationship, human relationship with God. How can we develop our relationship with God? Where is your relationship with God right now? What is your relationship like with God right now? When you speak to him, can you hear him talk back to you? What is your relationship? Or it seems like it's one-sided. You're talking, 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 and nobody's talking back. In the Bible, we've seen where the powerful men of God communicate with, with, with the Lord, and the Lord spoke and talk to them and give them direction and what they need to do. Yes. Is that God still available? Can it happen in our days? You know, where you can talk to God and the Lord actually commune back with you and talk to you. Do you think that possible? Isn't the word says the same God yesterday is the same today, tomorrow and forever? Yeah. He changeth not. So it seems like we are the one changing. Because God doesn't change, so we are changing then. And if we have this relationship with God where we can dialogue and talk to him, then our lives will be better. So the question I ask again, do you have a relationship with God? Let us pray. Father in heaven, great God, we just want to thank you and praise you and exalt you for everything. Lord, you're such a good God. You're such a righteous God. I just want to invite your holy presence to be with us. Touch everyone, O oh God, in the sanctuary who are watching. Remember, my dear sister over dear sister Ione. Lord, whatever we are going through tonight, please, Lord, cover us with your robe. Remember all those who are on the prior line, those who are watching live. Please, Lord, help us now as we come to the mercy seat. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen. I pray. What is your relationship supposed to be based on? What is it? We want that dialogue with the Lord. What is it supposed to be based on then? That relationship 
with God. Well, in, I'm going to attempt to explain some of the relationship we can have with God. Men on a whole often relies on religion to define the degree of spirituality. So some people depend on, I am this, I am a Christian, I am a Muslim, and think that can define our relationship with God because of the day you go to church. It goes back again. Remember, we're talking about the heart. You have many people go to different churches, but they are really connected. So we, we want to go a little bit deep to describe. Because you see, a lot of people base it on emotions and traditions and logic. Some people, you know, base it on formulating their own opinion concerning religion. It may be morality and immoral things. It may be your popular beliefs. It may be so many things you are entangled with and you're saying, this is my relationship. It may be just a religious cloak you're wearing and you're saying, I have a good relationship with God. But if you take a look at what happened before with men, or man and a whole? Religion always leaned heavily upon man's righteousness or the effort to say, I'm righteous. It often requires diligent service and work in expectation of earning eternal life. So you may see somebody and they are dedicated, always going to church, and you are saying, that's a good Christian. That's how we always judge things, because when we look on people, we form our own opinion. And praise God, God doesn't look on the outside. God looks from inside out. What is going on? How do we build this relationship with God? What does it take? to build this relationship. I want to tell you that his amazing relationship comes from his love, the way we love him, from inside. Not only love, but his grace and how he reached out to us. It's always been God's desire to reveal himself to us. This happened since creation, and if you look in Romans 1.20, you can just write the scriptures down. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. He had a relationship where he was able to dialogue, but something happened. In the beginning, God desired an everlasting love relationship with man. That was the whole plan. God wants to dialogue. He wants to come and commune with his people. But every time God comes closer, it seems like self comes in. Adam was made in God's image, then chose wisely to manage all of the humanity and the living things. But God designed a relationship he gave Adam a woman. God provided Eve as a companion so that Adam could experience intimacy, a union of love. But Adam chose to reject and disobey God's command. And you know the story. Producing sin, which separate mankind from God. Romans 5, verse 12. Sin brought or break down all the relationship with God, man and God, resulting in what? Shame and judgment. So there was this perfect relationship before in creation between God and humanity. And sin will bring separation. Is sin bringing separation today? There's so many things happening within the family unit. Is that separating us from the love of Christ? 
You heard so many things happening within the families. You heard of murder. You heard of all different types of abuse that is going on around. That is bringing separation. But that's not what God's plan is. God wanted to restore man again to him. Religion cannot restore a relationship. It's not the religion. It's not what you heard preaching. It's this love. It's not the, the human. It's not the ritual. It's not the deed. It's not the sacrifices that we do. It's not any payment that we have to provide. It's not anything but the blood of Jesus Christ and his glory and power that can reunite us back. To God. God's glory is his splendor. The outward display of his attributes or his character. God desire that we share that splendor. He loves us so much. He knows everything. He says God knows the beginning to the end. He knows all the results. He knows the joy that we are going to enjoy. But the devil don't want us to have that joy. So he continually plans and tries to break the relationship. He don't want us to have that relationship with God at all. I'm telling you, he did it in the beginning. And God sent his son to bring restoration. To bring us back in one accord. And the devil is trying the same trick over and over and over. We did not even chose God. God chose us for a special purpose before evil creation. You can find that in Ephesians 1, verse 4 and 5. What God has begun in the past, he will accomplish and complete in the future. It is his purpose through his son Jesus Christ to make us blameless without any single blemish. That is the whole plan of Jesus, of, of, of God, to reunite us and to love us and to give us the desire of our heart. God, God considers us children of the Heavenly Father. You could find that also in 2 Corinthians 6, verse 18. When redeemed, we are again sealed into a special relationship with God. While sin can enslave us to the point of fear, believers in Jesus Christ are adopted, receiving the same privileges as the natural born Christian. God is saying we were not to be so, but God has called us back into his own family. By sending Jesus Christ to die for you and I. That's what he's doing. He's bringing us back into that relationship. And if we truly take the time out to examine what God has done for us, the love, we will really appreciate him. God values us as precious treasures. And he is capable of honoring us. That is what God does. We are bought with a special price, the precious blood of Jesus, according to 1 Peter 1.19. It is God's will to save us, establishing an everlasting relationship with him. But through Jesus Christ's death, on the cross, Christ died voluntarily. He did not, nobody paid him. It's the love. And if we understood the love of Jesus Christ and what he did and what he paid for us, we will really appreciate him, that we have to build a relationship with him. If we build this relationship, nothing can stop God's people. How do we build that personal relationship with Christ? Picture the relationship that Jesus shared with his heavenly father. Picture the relationship, the closeness. 
And I want to tell you, the Lord brought something to me. Do you remember this scripture? Luke, Luke chapter 2. I'll read from verse 11. Sorry, verse 41. Luke chapter 2. And the Lord reminds me while I was coming here. We're talking about Jesus' relationship, and he's saying we should imitate it. How Jesus had that bond with his father. If we have such bond, there's nothing that we will be lack. If you look at verse 41 and it says, Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. So that's Jesus' parents, the earthly parents. And it says, And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days and they returned, the child Jesus tarried, Jesus Christ tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. So therefore, it was the Passover, and it was the first service that Jesus at age 12, they took him to Jerusalem, and when he was enjoying everything, and they were walking back on their journey back, they recognized way in the journey that the 12-year-old is not there. So they look around, they search right through the crowd, and Jesus was not there. So they decided, we have to turn back. We have to go and look for our son. So it says in verse 44, But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kingsfolk and acquaintance. So it was one day's worth of journey walking already, and they can't find him. And it says, And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. That's good parents. Deciding out of the love, we have to go back to search for our son. Now hear what happened in verse 46. And, at, and it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. Come on. You as a parent, if you go back and one day walk in, you have to turn back again that took another day. And Jesus was still in the temple asking questions. What would you do as a mother? Make sure your mother is not Jamaican. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Mercy. You know what I mean? The mother had all right to be upset. What are you doing here? Mercy. <laughs> so... They went back and they found him asking questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and questions. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowfully. They were pain, worried. A mother's pain. And the son was having a good time asking questions. What can we learn from this? But here the key verse to this now. Verse 49 says, And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? With you not that I must be about my father's business? Hello, somebody. What kind of connection is that? What kind of love is that? That you can put Christ first above your parents, above your wives, above your brother, above your sibling. That is serious. God just placed that in my thought when I was coming here to say, listen, if we imitate Christ and the relationship and the bond he had with his father, God Almighty, and we have that relationship with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We will be powerful through Jesus. He said, don't you see I'm about my father's business? What is your father's business? What is more important? 
if we see Christ first, he said all other things will be added unto us. If we put him first, if we decided we're going to wake up early, study the word, we're going to spread the gospel message, reach out in love to those who need love, those who need a hand, a helping hand. If we do that, then we reflect in Christ. I'm telling you, they were shocked to hear what the young man says. Could you imagine? God is saying, you got to look beyond. That the earthly father is not evil, our father. Our earthly mothers is not evil, our mother. We are beyond. God is saying, Christians need to look in this Christian dom. We need to look a little bit higher. If we start to look that way, then we're not going to focus on flesh. We're not going to focus on all the good gifts that we can get. We're going to put our mind higher. We're going to think about heavenly things. We're going to think about when the role is called up yonder to make sure that we are there. We are going to be there, brethren. I want to be there. Do you want to be there? I'm telling you, a lot of people are not going to be saved. I'm telling you. A lot of people are all into the earthly things. But praise God. The young man says, I'm about my father's business. He was in the word. He was studying the word. I want to tell you. I want to go to a couple more scripture here. I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 59. Listen, God is saying some powerful things here. We got to change this relationship. We got to come higher with the Lord if we want to see the true value of the Christian life and where God wants to take us. We can't remain the same. Go to Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. 59, verses 1 and 2. God is awesome. I'm just pointing out something here. Look, it says, Behold, the Lord hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. I want you to know. I know you know this scripture over and over. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. Hello, somebody. God is saying here, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened. The only way it's shortened and he can't hear you is because you're covered in sin. He can't hear you. Because you're calling out and he can't even hear. But if we want to build relationship, if we want to come higher, we got to get rid of the sin. And when we call, the Lord will hear. He said, it's not that I'm deaf why I can't hear you. My ears is not deaf. It's because I can't deal with iniquity and sin. I am not a God of sin. I'm a God of truth. So if you want me to hear you, you got to get rid of these sins. Hello, somebody. Go to Psalms 32. Go to Psalms 32. Make sure you write down these scriptures because these are powerful scriptures. I know some people know them already. Psalms 32, verse 1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Hello, hello, hello. You got to get it. Get it. He said, blessed. That's a pronunciation of just blessing you. Blessed. You know when you, you read um, Deuteronomy about the curses and blessings, what comes from the tongue is powerful. That's why when the Lord created heaven and earth, all he did was speak and he come into being. We don't understand the creative power. He just speak. It meant that if we speak things that is positive, that is godly, it will bring blessings to your children. Blessings upon your children. You got to declare it. You see some people look on their children and say, you're not going to come out to anything good. That's curses. You can't do that. If you do that, your children will come out as a vagabond. 
They ain't going to come out good. You already cursed them. The Lord is saying, listen again. Blessed is those whose transgression is forgiven. So therefore, we have to strive for that relationship and plead with God and confess our faults so that our transgression, our sins will be forgiven. And it says also that our sins will be covered. What can cover our sin? It's only the blood of Jesus. It doesn't mean that we can sin and hide it and nobody knows and we are up front in the church. No. He won't hear us. But his blood, when we confess them and go to the mercy seat, his robe of righteousness comes and it covers and destroys. No wonder Revelation 12 verse 11 says, we overcame them by the blood of the Lamb. That's the powerful blood is able. We are overcoming power through the blood of Jesus Christ of God. So as you picture the relationship and you parallel it with your life, you can look at John 1 verse 14 or John 6 verse 46. You can go and read those things. Through Jesus Christ, we experience God's presence and his strengthening relationship. We can see that, that if we have this relationship with Jesus, just as how Jesus prayed daily. You think Jesus needed to pray? He did not. But he was teaching that we have to rely on the higher power, God Almighty. And now he came to breach. He came to fill the gap. The broken relationship that sin caused. He came and he shed his blood and he joined us back together. And they are powerful. Listen. Love. I'm going to name a couple th few things before I close. Love is a key thing that Christ brought. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for you and I. That's God expressing his love for you and I. If we want to emulate and to follow God, we need to express our love. Not that we're going to shed blood, but we need to be kind, be gentle. Let the words from our mouth be mixed with salt. Be tasty, be good. When we talk to our children and friends, what he did also was sacrifice. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense. Jesus Christ, our advocate, sorry, the righteous one. He is atoning sacrifice for our sin. And not only for ours, but also for the sins of the entire world. You can find that in 1 John 2, 1 to 2. His, his sacrifice that he placed, he came and suffered. If we're going to build relationship, we got to sacrifice time with God. If we want to see God work, we're not just going to sit down and be lackadaisical and lazy. No. we got to step out in the name of Jesus Christ. You want a job, you got to pray over the resume and walk the street and give them out. Faith without works is dead. God is saying, faithfulness, God who has called you into fellowship with his son Jesus Christ our Lord is faithful. He's a faithful God. You can find it in 1 Corinthians 1 to 9. The God whom we serve is faithful. And he has called all of us into this relationship because he wants to save us. God is merciful. He extends mercy. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. 
Romans 3, 23, 24. What a God we serve. What a powerful God. What a God we serve. His mercies is ever there. His hands are ever open and say, come, I'm your father. He knows what you're going through. He's seen your suffering. And he stretched forth his hand and said, come. You know, sometimes we sin. And sometimes we sin and we wonder, is God really going to forgive me? You know that the devil, what the devil does is use guilt. You've done something and you're like, I, I work with some people that needs to be delivered and they're like, no, he won't forgive me. I've done too, this was too much. He won't forgive me. The guilt, the devil pushed it, but the mercies of God, because he said, while we were yet sinners, Christ sent his only begotten son. That's love. No matter what you're going through, God is saying, I will rescue you because of my mercies. My love that I have for you, I will rescue you. Two more. What about the peace? You know, the Lord talk about peace I give you. He says, and the peace of God which transcend all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 7. That's the peace. You know how many people can't sleep at night, have no peace? I receive a text today because there's a young man in Jamaica He's nine years old, and he's feeling pain. When the pain come, they had to hold him. He's rolling on the ground. They took him to every hospital, everything, and they can't rectify it. It's happening for days. They're Seventh-day Adventists, and somebody gave them my number. And as I usually say, it have nothing to do with me. But look at it this way. When Nehemiah was on the wall, he says, I can't come down. I'm doing a good work for the Lord. It has nothing to do with me. But if God is using me, I'm just an empty vessel willing to be used. If we are willing, the same can happen. I called the lady and I told her, put the boy down. Get some olive oil. I need some olive oil that nobody prays over because I don't know who's praying over it. She got the olive oil, and I said to her, we're going to bless the olive oil, and you're going to anoint him. And we bless the olive oil, and she anointed the young man. And she says he was sleeping first, and he was feeling hot. She feel the fire like heat. And she anointed him, and I rebuke, and I rebuke, and by the time we finish pray. The young man woke up. And when he woke up, he said to her that he's feeling better. Immediately he said, I'm feeling better and I know I'm going to be okay. Because that young man is anointed. You don't understand. He said, I'm feeling better. I received a text when I was coming here. That happened like three or four days ago. And the lady sent me a text. I have it, a voicemail and the WhatsApp that from that happened, he had no more pain from my prayer at that time. I got the message. I have it here on the WhatsApp. We have so many different cases. There was a lady, emergency. I spoke to her last night. And her daughter was going through something. And I told her the same thing. Lay your daughter down and pray. And while I was praying again, she felt the heat coming from her. But it was prolonging and I didn't have the time. So we're going to take it up back again. But she felt heat. And she's not accustomed to this. You could hear she's like, wow, she never act like this before. Why is she acting like this? You see, brethren, when you're praying, you see the scripture, somebody asked that question about the fervent prayer of a righteous man. Listen, once you confess your sins, we are righteous. We are covered under the blood. The problem is we're not confessing all of them. Because we think that, no, no, God already forgive me for that already. Um, I'm okay. I dealt with that already. 
So therefore, we're not coming and emptying everything at the foot of the cross. We're coming half done. And we can't get the power of the prayer because we're not emptying everything. You know that when you pray for forgiveness, you need to tarry there for a long time. Ask the Spirit of God to search you. Search you. You don't understand. If you went to a psychic, and it's 30 years ago you went to a psychic, a demon already entered you. 30 years and he's still there. That's why we experience so much power. Because we will tell you to write it down. And we will go back now and say, when you went to that woman 30 years ago, immediately there will be manifestation. You don't understand it. Because the demons are just sleeping in you. It doesn't mean you have horns if you are possessed. No. You carry on with everything the same way because the power of God allows you to maintain your life. I'm telling you. We don't understand the power of prayer. And again, I mention it. When you are intimate with people and you have several people that you're intimate with, every person you're intimate with, a spirit cross over into you. I know I had people ask me, there's a spirit. And somebody asked me the question and said, okay, say you have two young people. They are decent young people going to church, and they end up being intimate with each other. What kind of spirit will cross there? Could you name it? I don't have, that person don't have witchcraft in their background. They are Christian people, but things happen, and they sin. Is their spirit crossover? I said yes, 100%. It will give the devil legal rights to bring the spirit of jealousy. The spirit of, of nobody else can get you. You know? The spirit of I own you now. You know? The spirit of, uh, you know? <laughs> All different spirit will come and your desire will start to change. I tell the young people before that if you see a gentleman that you want to marry and you don't go intimate with them, you'll surely marry them. But the moment you go intimate, it's done. You know, the, the devil already gone with them and say, okay, you already score. You, you, you're out of here now. It's serious. That's how the devil works. If we control ourselves and allow the Spirit of God to work, we will experience the power. It doesn't matter if you have been there, you've done that. That's why he says... He's faithful and just to forgive you. You can bring it to the mercy seat, but don't just come to the mercy seat and forget all the sins that you have done. And then you come to the mercy seat and say, Lord, just forgive me for this. But then 20 years ago, you were really in sin that you need to bring to the mercy seat too. One day for God is like a hundred years or one hour. What about the devil? Yeah. Yeah. One day for the devil, maybe 50 years. We don't know. But, <laughs> you know, but it's supernatural power we're dealing with. They don't forget anything. Every human soul, the enemy have a demon going around with precise precision, writing down everything you do. And that's how some of the psychics know about people. When you go to them, the demon just come and tell them where you have been, and everything. And then you're like, wow, I can't believe this person know everything. Of course, because the demon was following you. Hello, we got to wake up. We got to wake up. The last one is joy. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. When we know where we're going, when we know whom we serve, there's joy, there's happiness, when we know that God is coming soon to take us out of this wicked world. What are we going to do? I can't wait for the Lord to come. I don't know about you, but I'm saying to the Lord, come Lord Jesus, come quickly. When you look on the rage and the hate around the world, somebody sent me a video with the church that they bomb. And when I look at it for two minutes, my heart was sore, vex, and pain. I could hear like the beehive 
of mourning. I could see all the benches broken up, the church benches broken, and I could see bodies and blood everywhere. And all I heard is the humming of distress and pain. And when I heard that, I said, God, where are you? How long, Lord, are we going to go through this wickedness? But the Bible told us that perilous times is coming. There's going to be more evil time when men are going to be lovers of themselves. There's going to be rumors of war. It's going to escalate. There's going to accidents. It's going to escalate in the last days. Are you going to wait until it's too late? Are you going to make sure now? I'm telling you, it's so easy to serve God. If we just come to the mercy seat, talk to God, dialogue with him. Get a book where you can write. Write out and talk to God as you dialogue. You will have an experience. You will have a relationship where it's so sweet that when you're in the house of the Lord, you don't even look on your time. You just want more and more time with God. God is bidding you tonight and said, I love you so much. I sent my son to die for you. I love you. I know you by name and number. I know you personally, Milton. The Lord is saying, I know you by name. I know all your children. I know everything about you. I love you. Yes, Sister Monica, he's saying, I love you too. God is saying, I love you so much. You don't understand. If you are the only sheep, I would have come. God is saying, I want us to be part of the 99. He don't want us to be that one that is gone astray. God is saying to you, I want to deliver you, Sister Ione. I love you. I want to deliver you tonight. God is able. Just stand with me. I'm going to close. You're watching live. You can stand where you are. It's not human. It's Christ we're talking about. He sees everything. He's omnipresence. He's everywhere. He's omniscient. He's everywhere. He's watching you right now. He knows what you're going through. He's seen your hurt and pain. He's seen your struggles. But God has the power through Jesus Christ to break all principalities and to redeem you and to bring you back into that intimate relationship where as you speak to him he can dialogue back to you just as when Moses was reasoning with the Lord and when Moses reasoned with the Lord Moses said could you show me yourself and God says listen if I show myself you're not going to live and he said okay okay even if I see a part of you come on and the Lord says okay I'm going to hide you in the cliff of the rock because I don't want you to die. I'm going to put you in the rock. And I want to tell you that that cliff of the rock is Jesus. Mercy. I'm going to get Jesus to enclave, to make a, a circle around you, to keep you from my presence, to keep you from the powerhouse. That's what God is saying. I want to keep you. God wants to keep you tonight. He knows you personally. Allow him to come in. Allow him. Let us pray. Father in heaven, remember all those who are on the prayer line. Those who have called from far away like our dear brother Royce from Australia and many people, uh, Sister Mavis, people that is calling from UK. They set up its way in the hours in Dubai. And people are watching in the way hours. Lord, you are God. Everywhere, Jesus, around the world, people are watching. You are the same God. I know you love us. You love each individual, Sister Celeste. You love so many of your people watching. Oh, God, I pray that you will just draw nigh unto us. Bring us back into that relationship so that we can hear you. We can talk to you and you can dialogue with us. Lord, the days are evil.
People are struggling financially. But Lord, I know a breakthrough is coming. It's not going to be long before the Christian will be the head and not the tail. It's not going to be long before we're go, going to be above and not beneath. It's not going to be long before we're going to be the lender to many nations and not the borrower. Lord, because you said everything is yours. Oh God, have mercy upon your people tonight. Have mercy upon Sister Corrine from the UK who said she want to visit her family in Jamaica but the funds is not there she and her two children her mother she don't even have the money to take the plane oh God I know you can help somebody tonight oh God reach out tonight to your people and please oh God as we beseech thee please Lord draw nigh and touch the hearts of your people and may there be conversion so that we can have that relationship with you. Thank you now, O oh God, for blessing your people in your sanctuary. Thank you for blessing us all over the world who are listening to this sermon that we will never be the same. Bless all our church brethren in Ajax. Thank you, Lord, for blessing your people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. I just want to say again, thanks for watching us at the Button to Christ ministry. We hope to see you soon. May God just bless you and keep you, and may you continue to keep us in your prayers. We need the prayers. We need more people. There's hundreds of people calling in from around the world, and we cannot keep up. Please pray for strength. Until then, may God bless you and keep you. And may his face shine upon you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Thanks for watching this program. We hope that you were blessed. To further your support with us, please consider giving a donation at buttontochrist.com or .org. Any amount is appreciated and will be used for the continued growth of our ministry and the spreading of the gospel to the world. May God richly bless you and we'll see you next time.